Okay, let's take on this classic high school level geometry problem. And that is we want to find the angles. So we have two lines here. They appear to be uh, parallel. And then we have another line crossing through it. And we're told that this angle here is 60 degrees. And what we want to do is find this angle, this angle, this angle, this angle, this angle. So we have quite a few variables going on here. And uh, if you don't know what you're doing, this could be kind of intimidating. Matter of fact, some of you might have this kind of look on your face like, oh, no, I can't do this. Well, just one second. This is not that difficult. Matter of fact, it's uh, not only is it not that difficult, um, but this is uh, knowledge that all of you need to understand, okay? Because this type of question comes up quite frequently in all sorts of tests like the SAT, ACT, GED, et cetera. And really the secret to this um, solving this problem is this notation right there, okay? So if you don't know what this means, you're definitely gonna wanna stick around here for a couple minutes and learn this stuff, super important. Not that difficult, but critical um, math knowledge for all of you out there. So we're gonna get into all this in just one second, but first let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. And if you're struggling in mathematics, I'm telling you, it doesn't have to be that way. I've been, um, again, teaching math, and I can tell you all students have the potential to do much, much better than they think they can, but it requires two things. One, you got to be willing to put the work in. Okay, so if you're not working hard enough, you need to increase your effort in learning. But the second thing you need is great math instruction and clear and understandable that's where i can help you out so if you're at the middle school high school or college level check out my math help program i'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video by the way if you happen to be preparing for some sort of test with a math section things like the ged sat asvab maybe a teacher certification i have a large amount of test prep courses that can help you out if you homeschool have great middle and high school math courses that can help you out hey and if this video helps you out don't forget to like it and subscribe to my channel, that definitely helps me out. All right, so let's get into this problem. Not that difficult, but again, like anything, if you don't know what you're doing, you know, uh, of course, it's going to be um, a mystery of what we're gonna do here. So let's uh, take a look at the situation. All right, so we have two lines and another line that is chopping through it. Now, just by looking at these lines, these lines appear to be parallel to one another, right? So let's just give some names to this line. Let's say this is line L and this is line M. If they're parallel to one another, I can state that by saying L is parallel to M. Now this is super critical in terms of knowing what's going on here because in geometry, you cannot assume that two lines are parallel just because they look parallel, right? This is a kind of a classic math trick that you'll see on tests like the SAT and ACT, I can uh, draw two lines like this, okay? They look uh, parallel, they're like, oh, these lines look parallel, uh, and then students will just assume they are parallel. Unless they're explicitly stated as being parallel, you cannot assume that these lines are parallel. Now, it, this really will change the nature of this problem because if we had this situation, let's say you had a line and another line that wasn't parallel and another line that chopped through it like this, this would change the situation quite dramatically, okay? So here's what you need to know, that these two lines are in fact parallel. Let's get rid of this L and M, but how can we determine that? Well, this little notation right there, okay? If you have one little arrow on a line or another arrow like, uh, like this, you'll see it sometimes like so or sometimes like this, that's an indication, that's a notation that's used to uh, state that this line is parallel with this line. Again, you'll either see that or you'll see um, it explicitly told to you by two um, names of uh, this line or this line. There's all sorts of ways. You could say line L is parallel to line M. If this was line AB, you might have AB, like line AB is parallel to line CD. As long as you have this parallel um, symbol, okay, or notation, or this parallel notation, that's the key to doing this problem. Because once you know that these two lines are in fact parallel, now I'm taking some time to really highlight that because um, uh, if they were not parallel, we couldn't do this problem. Okay, there'd be another situation going on. Uh, but the fact that they are parallel means that we're what we're dealing with here is parallel lines and a transversal. 
okay this little line it chops through uh, these two lines is called a transversal and when you have that situation all sorts of interesting angles are formed so let's go ahead and review these real quick and then we'll solve the problem so these are the type of problems that are or type of angles excuse me that are formed so the first type are vertical angles so what are vertical angles vertical angles would be like this angles like five and four okay are vertical angles three and six are vertical angles now what you need to know is that vertical angles are equal okay or congruent in other words same angle measure and if you just look they look to be like the same right like angle three appears to be the same as angle six five and four seem to be, have the same angle measure in fact they are okay so vertical angles are equal and you have other vertical angles here too so like seven and two one and eight i'm not going to list all those out but you would need to be able to do something like that let me go ahead and just erase all this um, if you're like taking a geometry course let's put that angle three back in there all right so vertical angles right so vertical angles are equal now the next angles that you need to be familiar with is alternate interior angles so let's notice here angles five and six and seven and eight are exterior to these parallel lines okay so we're not talking about exterior angles we're talking about uh, uh, interior angles that's where this I comes into and we're talking about uh, angles that alternate across the transversal so like three and two these would be alternate interior angles so alternate interior angles are also equal okay so just look here three and two seem to uh, match up and one and four are also alternate interior angles okay so you need to know these properties of parallel lines and angles formed when you have uh, two or more parallel lines and a transversal all right how about the ca well that's call, uh, called corresponding angles so corresponding angles are angles that are kind of in the same position like one and five okay you can see like one and five have that same position and let me ask you what do you think is the property here with corresponding angles okay well yes in fact they are equal they just look equal right so one and five uh let me ask you another question what are some other alternate or corresponding angles excuse me so two and six okay eight and four seven and three are also corresponding angles all right so let's go back to our next angles here and that is same side interior angles so again we're dealing with interior angles uh, inside these parallel lines and same side not alternating so two and uh, four would be same side interior angles so what is the deal there well these are not going to be equal now look here this is an obtuse angle this is an acute angle but the deal is the alternate interior angles they add up okay they add up to 180 degrees okay so that's what you need to know same side interior angles add up to 180 degrees so one and three add up to 180 and two and four add up to 180 and then our last angles here are um, uh, straight angles okay so straight angles would be things that form a straight line like one and two okay or five and six or three and four or seven and eight so how many angles or how many yes how many angles uh is total in a, uh when you add up to straight angles well it's going to be 180 degrees as well i.e angle one plus angle two is 187 and eight when you add them together it's going to be 183 and four or five and six you and uh etc etc so by the way too you can see that we also have straight angles here with five and three one and seven two and eight there's all sorts of ways you can look at uh, this figure but this is what we're talking about parallel lines and a transversal and explicitly we're talking about parallel lines if you if you weren't told that in other words if you have two lines like this okay that weren't necessarily parallel and a transversal going through it these properties would not apply okay some of them would others would not okay all right, so now knowing that we're dealing with parallel lines and a transversal, this becomes pretty easy. So we can just start uh, this. Um, matter of fact, if you want to go ahead and just answer these questions now before I answer them, you can just approach this any number of different ways. So let's start with uh, W, okay? So W is what type of angle when we're looking at 60, okay? This would be a what? If you said corresponding angle, I must go ahead and give you a nice little happy face 
for uh, being such an astute uh, student. Okay, you're obviously paying attention, but 60 and W are corresponding angles, i.e. they are the same angles. So W would be equal to 60 degrees as well. Okay, now watch how easy this goes. So that's uh, 60 degrees. We did that. Now let's talk about vertical angles. Okay, so W and Y are vertical angles. So that means Y is what? Well, Y would also be 60 degrees. Okay, so this is going to get kind of um, super easy here in a second. So you can see 60 degrees right there. This is 60 degrees. And now 60 and 60, this is alternate interior angles. Very simple. Let's go ahead and go for angle X right here. Okay, so how can we solve that? Well, 60 plus X, if you want to write it as an equation, would be equal to 180 degrees, or X would be equal to 180 minus 60. You can do it this way, or 120 degrees. Okay, so X is 120 degrees. And then we can say, all right, X and T are corresponding angles. So T, okay, is also going to be 120 degrees. And what are we missing? Angle Z. So this is 120. And right here, Z is a what? Vertical angle um, uh, to angle T. So uh, Z is also going to be 120 degrees. Let's go to make sure I did this right. 120. That's 120. This would be 120. Now you have alternate interior angles are equal, so that makes sense as well. X and Z are the same. And these angles right here, that was angle Y and 60, um, are also alternate interior angles. They are the same. And that's it. Okay, so again, this is not that difficult. If you knew all this stuff, that's fantastic. Matter of fact, I will give you an A plus and 100% and a few stars here. This wasn't exactly over uh, over the top difficult but it's critical knowledge that all of you out there need uh, to know okay yes it is geometry but whether you're taking um, you know algebra 2 algebra 1 this this is like common high school level geometry it's going to come up over and over and over again in various courses and various tests so hopefully um, this is pretty easy, and if that is the fact, if you're like, okay, now I understand this stuff, well, that was the whole purpose of the video. All right, if you need additional help with geometry, I have a ton of videos um, in my geometry playlist on my YouTube channel, or you might want to check out my full comprehensive geometry course. Of course, uh, you can find all this information by following the link in the description below. By the way, I do have math notes, uh, so if you need some geometry math notes, I have those uh, in the description uh, below as well. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.